right. Thank you, Pastor Eric, for meeting me. I really appreciate it. And um, thank you for being willing to, to talk about this topic. Believe it or not, there's been pastors I've asked to interview that have said no, right? So I don't know. Uh, some people, I guess, are don't want their opinions criticized, right? So we're, we're not looking to do that. We just want to ask folks, you know, what their opinions are on certain scriptures that other people disagree on. First question. In Genesis chapter 1, it, it describes creation, right? The, the seven days of creation week. Um, do you feel like those, like Genesis 1's description of creation, like those days are literal or figurative? Oh, figurative. Figurative? Okay. If we try to limit God saying how long a day was, then we're trying to make God, who's infinite, finite. Okay. So in, in that passage, it mentions, and I guess this would, this would kind of, like your first answer would kind of follow up with the second question, which is, uh, you know, it mentions day four in, in Genesis 1, and I think it's verses 14 through 18 about the sun, moon, and stars being created on day four. Now that would seemingly be contradictory, right, to what we've been taught growing up in our society that, um, you know, the sun and moon came first and the earth came later, millions of years later. Mm -hmm. And so if, you know, if everything, if the earth was created on, on, you know, in the day one, right? Or I guess it's to say well, the material for the earth was yeah. created on day one, Genesis 1-1. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really filled out yet. Um, then that would be contradictory to what we've been taught growing up. Would you agree with that or? Well, and again, we can't limit how long a day was. Okay. Okay. Day four happened on day four according to God's day four. Okay. To have man come up with a day is limiting God again. All right. Thank you. And so earlier in Genesis 1, in verses 2 through 8, it starts to mention, you know, where it says the spirit hovered over the waters of the deep in verse 2. And then it starts to go into um, explaining this, this thing that the Hebrew calls the rakia or the firmament is what it's translated into later in the Latin and in the English. I think some versions like the ESV and I think the NASB, um, they'll call it the expanse. And I think they get that from the Greek word, the stereoma. Still sp speaking about the same idea, it says that the waters that were there were divided by this thing called the firmament, the stereoma, mm -hmm. and that some of the waters went up and the other waters that went down, we see later in verses 9 through 13, those receded and became the waters that we would call the oceans and rivers and things like that. So big question, is that firmament a literal structure that divides waters or is it all figurative language? Well, and God separated the, the light <laughs> And the heavens and the stars and the firmament, the earth, it could have been a solid thing. It could have been a molten volcanic thing, but it was just the separation that occurred at that time Okay. that God made. So do, when I did some further research on that word, this, this firmament idea, this rakia uh, thing, uh, I found out that it, in verse 8, it, the firmament uh, is called the heaven. It's like a, the, God gives the name heaven, the Shomayim in the Hebrew, um, in the Greek, I think it's the Aronos, gives this, this name heaven to this firmament concept. And so then I started thinking, okay, wait a minute, though. That means I've seen the word heaven everywhere in the Bible, like all these different books, you know. So I started trying to do some further digging, and I, and I started realizing, okay, so when the Messiah, when Jesus in Matthew 24, he talks about um, when he's returning with the angels, and they're going to bring justice to the earth, peace to the earth, right? The second coming idea. In Matthew 24, 29 through 31, he talks about the stars falling to the ground. Mm -hmm. And this is also parroted in Isaiah 34, 4 and Revelation 6, verses 11 through 14. Is that a literal event or is that a figurative event? When Yeshua comes back, is the stars going to actually fall? Well, does that mean it's heaven on earth? Is that, oh, does so that, that, that would be... Even further? Is that your idea? Is that it's speaking about like heaven's coming to earth and that's why it's some of the stars falling to the ground? Oh, uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's wild because, I mean, obviously what we've been taught growing up is the stars are millions of light years away and that they're, uh -huh. some of them are much bigger than even our sun and that, you know, I, like, for example, if... Um, obviously at the end times when Jesus comes back, if the stars are going to fall onto the earth, then it's going to happen. Okay. All right. Now, I think in the two different models that, that we've been taught, or at least the model that we've been taught in school growing up versus what I've been looking at with this firmament idea, the firmament seems like in Amos 9.6, it says about the firmament um, in a couple different translations. It calls it a, an actual dome over the earth, an mm -hmm. enclosure over right. the earth. And some of them, like in the KJV, it calls it a troop. 
that is bounding uh, the, the waters. And I had to look that up, and apparently a troop was something that encloses something and encapsulates something, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, all right, well, I guess I, I could see why the translator would use that. But mm-hmm. so then when I think of this this prophecy, this idea that, you know, Jesus is going to come back, and then he's coming with these angels. They're coming down. They're coming from up, down to us. And then um, and the stars are going to fall to the ground. That seems pretty pretty detrimental if I'm in a model that I was taught growing up. Should we take that the, the descriptions in Revelation 21 – of the New Jerusalem being uh, described as 1,500 square miles. Um, it seems to give dimensions. I think we have to translate them into English, you know. But um, do I take those schematics, those dimensional blueprints, do I take that literal or figurative? Is it literally land coming back with the Messiah, or is it just a metaphoric or figurative language? Well, it will be Jesus coming back. Jesus literally comes back. And then the Jerusalem that is or is to be, it will be here with Jesus in whatever form Jesus wants it to be. Okay. Okay. All right. So I appreciate it. Did you have any questions for me? No, that's good. No? Okay. Good good things for discussion always. For sure. Yeah. This is what we've been finding. A lot of believers are talking about and, uh, you know, with social media these days, you can talk to believers all over the world. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And you can get into all kinds of conversations yeah. that you may not be able to at a Bible study because that's a little bit more controlled and, and mm-hmm. a little bit more directed by the leader of the Bible study. You know, so there's a whole bunch of uh, groups that, you know, can be created on different social medias where people can just freely and randomly talk about all these topics and ask uh-huh. what seems at first might be a silly question, but then people start talking about it for days and days, you know? Uh-huh. So it's, I think so any like, and all like discourse. Bible studies on Tuesday morning. Oh, really? Because yeah. You guys do those? We go over the scriptures for the coming week and we all talk about what it means for us today and what we think it means, what it could mean. And everyone is able to offer their opinions. And, That's great. And and free thought and talk out loud and think out loud. And that's oh, great. What does this mean? What doesn't it mean? What could it mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great, sir. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Cause I've, you know, my personal experience growing up, um, my father stopped pastoring my, uh, the church that, that he pastored when I was 11. He started doing this missions work and, and doing other things with the foundation. So then I would go to other churches, and we, I, didn't, I didn't have a lot of those experiences where you could have free, open di- dialogue, question asking, or discourse in, uh, in some of the Bible studies or some of the youth groups or young adult groups. You know, So that's encouraging to hear. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Yeah, we believe in asking questions and having honest thought, and, you know, we don't force people to believe things we give them scripture reason tradition and experience and let them put all those together to come to an understanding of faith in jesus christ awesome awesome thank you so much sir appreciate it take a journey with me with me with me